we have a weapon system that could counter Hezbollah's uh, fire campaign against us. It's a counter fire campaign. We now have people suddenly realizing that if we're going to stop the Iranians from developing a nuclear weapon, um, we have to hit them hard and time is running out. Time is running out. We have to hit them with a very focused, um, smart, preventive nuclear strike. Um, if it requires uh, eliminating Tehran as a warning to the rest of our neighbors, it's a r pretty rough neighborhood we're in, fine. I don't have any problem with that. And I don't think a lot of other people would either. As far as Gaza is concerned, we, we just have to acknowledge the fact that there's, you know, there's an expression in Hebrew, Ein Brera, there's no alternative but to annex Gaza and to cut of, of the, the animals, the, the, the monsters that currently live at that, that wretched piece of, of earth. We just have to doubt. And we have to turn to the Egyptians finally and say, you know what? You've been part of this problem for a long time. You've looked the other way, you know? You look no, the other they've way. Done, they've done more than look the other way. They have actively uh, assisted, facilitated, and facilitated uh, military and intelligence operations against Israel for decades. Again, in violation of every possible treaty and agreement. They just signed on to the South African uh, case against us, the genocide case. And I, I suggested to friends of mine here in the foreign ministry, which was a joke, uh, that the Egyptians right now are in violation of human international humanitarian law by not allowing the Gazans to flee cross, a war. Cross the border into, into Egypt. Correct, into Egypt. And I said, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Maybe, maybe we should, I said, um, submit a war crimes a, a accusation to the International Criminal Court against, well, the International Court of Justice, because we're not part of the, uh, the other one, but to submit a complaint that they are in violation of international humanitarian law. And the response I got was, why would we do that? <laughs> just, you know, I've that's, just taken that's, off a that's, lot of time. That's the Israeli uh, foreign ministry for you. Uh, my friend, Yonathan, I think that uh, even though we had other things that we mentioned we might discuss today, I, I fear that time has, has uh, run out for today. Hopefully we'll be able to meet up again in the near future and uh, cover those other points. I'll, I'll end with this, with this thought. There is evil in the world. The world is not populated solely by well-intentioned, righteous people. There are plenty of nasty, evil uh, even satanic people and nations and organizations in this world. And many of them focus much or all of their energy against the Jewish people. And the reason for that is because we know and they know that we represent the good and they cannot bear that. That is, That was Hitler's reason for being obsessed with the Jews because he wanted to, to establish a, a, a different kind of world based on on uh, violence and power and, uh, and a total Blood. absence of morality. And, and we are the people who introduce morality, uh, the Ten Commandments, to the world from Hashem. But we were the, the, the vessel and the conduit. And I want to mention, uh, in conclusion, that which the Mishnah and the Talmud state at the end of Masechet Barachot, Tractate Barachot, that one is required to do Hashem's will in this world using both our positive inclinations, our more noble and refined, the more, the more noble and refined aspects of our of our being, of our souls, and also the yesahara, the yesahara tov, and the yesahara, the yesahara is the, the the evil inclination, our more base and even animalistic 
impulses, which exist within the human heart as well, every human heart. The, the question is to know when and how to utilize the the evil inclination and the and the and the good inclination, and in which situation it is incumbent upon us not to allow the the good inclination to override the the evil. That is to say, not to allow the the ability to punish and destroy evil and the evil doers in the world. How not how not to allow a, a, a false apparently pleasant and, and moral view of the world, but but in fact a false and misleading picture of, of reality, how to not allow that to get in the way of dealing with evil and destroying evil and being as cruel and as harsh as the, as the reality requires. And uh, that is what Rabbeinu Yonah, a great Jewish sage of the 13th century in, from Spain, Rabbi Jonah of Gerondi writes in his commentary at the end of Masechet Barachot, he writes that there is even the, the most uh, harsh and uh, most the least noble and refined aspects of our, of our souls and our beings must be harnessed uh, to do Hashem's will in this world. And he specifically mentions the Midah of Achzar Yuth, of cruelty that it is necessary to know that the cruelty exists. We have the capability uh, to be cruel, and this must be done in the right situation to Correct. when dealing with complete, utter evil, such as Islam or Nazism. And uh, we must not, we must not uh, prevent ourselves from allowing that, that part of our being to take hold and direct us in, the, in, in this kind of situation, because that is what is required, and that also is Avodat Hashem, that is doing Hashem's work in the world, because our aim in the world, part of our destiny and, and uh, God-inspired and, uh, and uh, instituted purpose in this world is to destroy evil, because when, as, as, uh, as a certain wise man said, I'm probably not going to uh, be precise in, in this uh, quotation, that all, all all that is required for for the evil to flourish in the world is for good men to do right. nothing. To do nothing, and 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 we are the good men, and we must not do nothing. I'll, I'll leave leave you with that thought. Thank you once again. Thank you. Uh, all the best. A pleasure as usual. Shalom. Shalom.